In today's show, it's a Market Watch Monday, looking at the trends of average draft position, ADP, on Yahoo, ESPN, Fantrax, and what I've done on my projections over at basketballmonster.com. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. We're pumping out the shows today. We have done a Points League Do Not Draft show. I've done an ESPN Points League mock draft. And now we're going to do our standard show, which is the Market Watch Monday, looking at ADP trends. Probably the last one of these I do, to be honest, because the next time we have a Monday, it's going to be just before the season. And maybe I don't need to do one. But anyway, we're going to do it here. It's going to be a shorter show. So, warning. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> All right, what have I done to my rankings and my projections over the last week with available information? This is what I've changed. Just four ups and four downs I'm looking at here. I have really boosted Jamal Kane. He was on a camp invite and now has performed well enough to get a two-way contract. Darius Days is out of there. Um, Kane has played well in preseason and he is a forward. And they need forwards. There is still Hayward Highsmith. There is still Caleb Martin. There is still the potential of Omer Yurtseven playing minutes. There is still um, Nikola Jovic, who had some big games as well. But try to follow the trends of this, this stuff. The fact that they brought him and they out-converted him to two-way. And we know what they do with these guys. Max Drews, Duncan Robinson, Gabe Vincent, Omer Yurtseven, Hassan Whiteside. There's heaps of them. I don't draft Jamal Kane in 12-team leagues. But I've bumped him like 157 spots in my rankings. He's a 16-team league target, unless you play on ESPN, of course, which why would you? But if you do, you can't pick him up because he's not in their system at all. But otherwise, just he's one to just keep keep him in the old noggin, keep him in the scone. Think, remember the name, watch what happens. Don't be shocked if he's in the rotation opening night. And that is important for deeper leagues. I bumped Isaiah Roby up 88 spots as well. Now, that's because he was way, way down. Do not look at him as a must-draft player. But the Spurs are going to... They're playing him almost exclusively as a four. And it's Cater Bates, Diop, who's getting minutes there. And it's Jeremy Sohan as well. Roby is a really good fantasy producer. He's a name to watch. He's like a 16... Look, he might be useless. They might not play him. and They might just play him in 15 minutes of those other three guys as well. Those other two guys, sorry. But just a name to watch. I've also bumped Tari Eason up 69 spots. Giggity. As I have said constantly, I worry about them limiting him early in the season because they still have Tate and Gordon there. And that might mean 17 minutes a night for Eason. But I think we'll get 25 or so later on. But we also thought that with Shengun. And we thought we might get it with Josh Christopher. And it never really happened until like Shengun in like the end of March. And it never happened for Christopher. Eason looks great. He's got a massively good fantasy skill set. He's worth at least a 13th round pick, maybe 12th. I've seen people going in round 10, which is maybe a little bit early. Because again, I think you're going to be a little bit let down. I really don't see Steven Silas, the man who started Daniel Tyson and Christian Wood together. I don't really see Steven Silas going in there and saying, right, Eric Gordon um, or Jay Sean Tate, one of you is just not playing. And both of you are coming off the bench and Eason is starting. I don't think that's going to happen. It could, but I have bumped Eason up. I've also bumped Isaiah Jackson up, just giving him a couple of extra minutes. Um, not much. It doesn't take much to bump up 24 spots. A couple of, I think, one or two extra minutes. But a lot of that is also just factoring in that maybe Turner gets traded. A little bit of a boost in Jackson. I've also, this, and this is going to be interesting as we go through this show, I've moved Brandon Clark down. He's fallen 18 spots in my numbers, but his ADP data has actually gone up on nearly all the sites. I don't know why. I don't think Brandon Clark's going to start. I think Santi Aldama's going to start. I think Clark, so we thought he might get a big, big boost early in the season. So I think that big, big boost is now, you know, at best, just a single big boost. It might only be a marginal boost. 
And then when Jaron returns, his value's in real trouble. So I've dropped him 18. I've dropped Norman Powell down 18 spots. I thought there was a chance that Powell would start for the Clippers, but apparently not. Nor, uh, Marcus Morris is going to start, which is, again, I think a stupid decision. But if Powell isn't starting, his minutes cap, it gets capped. His minutes upside gets capped. Starting, he might play 32 minutes a night. And he will get starts when Kawhi is out or when Paul George is out. He'll get starts. I would imagine that as soon as one of Kawhi, George, or Morris is out, Powell will start. But it's different to playing 32 minutes a night, 30 games a year, versus playing 32 minutes a night, 70 games a year. So I dropped him down a little bit, 18 spots. Jalen Suggs, injured. This is his per game rank. I've also dropped down 17 because as he returns from a knee injury, there'll be a little bit of warming up period in that. And then when he does come back, Fultz and Harris might be there at the same time too. So that drops him down. And I also dropped down the uh, rabbit hunter, Alex Caruso. Be very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. Why? Because it looks like Ayo Desunmu is locked in as the starting point guard. Um, not that I love Desunmu because there's just too many guys there. But if, if Caruso is not going to start and Desunmu and Dragic and White are all getting minutes, then... You know, can he play 30 a night? He's a steal specialist. He probably needs those 30 minutes a night. And I don't think he's going to get them. And I thought he was going to be the starter, but it is looking like it's going to be Desunmu. So Caruso's value has dropped down to me. And that's... You know, there are you know, eight guys, four ups, four downs, that I've adjusted the rankings of, the biggest movements we've seen in this uh, little like, one-way period since I did it last time. But... We've got no movement in what the best option is for placing your ads for hiring. And if you're a small business, you know, hiring is the most important thing. You make a mistake there, it costs you time, it costs you money, it costs you productivity. LinkedIn Jobs is here to help you find the right people for your team faster and for free. If you want to be 100% certain that you're going to access the best qualified candidates available, LinkedIn Jobs is here. What you do, you go in, you create your job. It's really simple. Put in everything that you're looking for and then you add your job and you add a purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile and that spreads the word that you are hiring. Simple tools, screening questions. It makes it easy to focus on the candidates with the right skills and expertise for the job you are looking for. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash LockedOnNBA. That's linkedin.com slash LockedOnNBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Let's go to Yahoo. Let's look at some ADP stuff over there. These are some rises in ADP over the last week. It's just it's interesting to track where things are going as we head into draft season. D'Anthony Melton, the biggest riser, seven spots up. That shocked me. And it's not like there are some guys that rise in like the 200 and 250s, especially when it comes to fan I'm going to ignore some of those guys that don't apply to most people. But Melton's up to 113. Not really sure what the need to jump him up that high is. He's still a reserve. He's still going to be with Thibault and Milton and Korkmaz on the bench unit. 113 is a starter. It's a round 10 pick. And I love Melton. I'm not sure about that. Category leagues, maybe. Points leagues, no. Trey Jones has moved up six spots to 105. Keep it going. He is just 10 more spots there at least. I don't see anyone else starting a point guard for the Spurs. He should be a top 100 pick. People are catching up, but it's not quite there. See, and Brandon Clark moved up five spots. Five. Why did that happen? Um, He's up to 97. No, absolutely no reason to take him at 97. Um, yeah, I don't get it. Why are people going higher on Brandon Clark these days? Avoid that one. And Monty Morris is up five spots to 119. I think he can probably come in a little bit more than that. Again, a quality starting point guard. Not, he's not sexy. He's not exciting. He's not breakout sort of bloke. But yeah, 119, like what, 20 spots higher than Brandon Clark. He's going behind De'Anthony Melton. I don't think that should happen. Franz Wagner has moved up five spots. He's up to 78. That's probably about right. Again, showing how stupid it was that he was ranked 260th to begin draft season. Absolutely no excuse for that. Don't know why that was the case. Um, Jim Wiseman, Blunty, he's moved up five spots to 123. Where are you now? Um, yeah, okay, fine. That is just outside round 10. No way. Am I taking a flyer on James Wiseman, who literally might play 18 minutes a night 
and suck in assists and threes and steals and free throws with a spot that is maybe a starter. No, no. Um, Jalen Brunson's moved up five spots to 66. I'm finding myself taking him in the 50s now. So I get this trend moving forward. And Larry Markkinen's moved up, which he should have, but four spots to 104. We're 30 spots off that still with Markkinen. I grab him in the 70s and a lot of drafts. A lot of times you can get in the 80s or 90s, obviously, going by that fact that it's moving up, but it's moving up super slowly. Um, Let's look at some guys that have dropped. It's going to be the same with these injured guys. Lonzo Ball down 14 spots. Rob Williams down 13. Jaron Jackson down 11. It's interesting to me that Rob Williams is at 73 and Jaron's at 104 when Jaron does have a chance of coming back earlier than Rob. Yes, Rob is probably a better fantasy player, but it's not that big a difference. And Lonzo, you know, I wouldn't take... Lonzo until round 12 or 13. Rob Williams and Jaron Jackson, I wouldn't take both of them, but I'll consider them in round 10, maybe. Probably round 11, but maybe round 10. Isaiah Jackson, who I just mentioned that I've actually bumped up a little bit, he's fallen. Nine spots down to 124. They had him way out of the picture. They bumped him all the way up to 85, and now they've pushed him way back down, and the ADP is following that like a magnet. 124 is amazing value for him. They also, inexplicably to me, moved Jalen Smith, Sticks, down to like 120. And I thought people wouldn't fall for it, but they are. So the ADP for him is falling. It's down to 123. You can get him at 123, like one spot after Lonzo Ball, lol. 30 spots after Brandon Clark. Yeah, I take it every day. Shea's fallen five spots to 48. Shea might be available opening night. I think at the end of the fourth round, early fifth round, which is where he is going at the moment, that it's amazing value. Like I've said on a few shows, I'm not massively factoring in this alleged every team in the world is tanking for Wembenyama, so I can't draft anyone from a bad team situation. I'm at, at that point, that value is it's too good for me to pass up on. Brogdon, for God knows what reason, has seen his ADP fall five spots to 109. With the way that he is currently playing, with the injury to Gallinari and to Rob Williams, it should be going up his ADP. Not to where it was initially. I think ESPN had him at 50 at the start of the year. Yahoo had him higher. But 109? I love that. And then Bob Covington's down 5 to 129. That one, I can um, that one I can get behind. Uh, I, I don't know how he is going to play enough to be useful you know, around that starter level, round 10, round 11. I'm, look, you can get, be a steals and blocks streamer for sure. But I think that's probably it. BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. You want to check out the Dolphins action for week six? My Dolphins with their two starting quarterbacks out with concussion. Skylar Thompson season, let's go. You can find it at BetOnline. Your continued source for all sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. It is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball playoffs, MMA, boxing, golf, and of course the NBA. We are ready to go in like a week and a half. Head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. Let's go to ESPN now and look at some ADP data over there. Larry Markkinen and the... Well, I don't really know. Um, No, that's not true. I am guessing as to why this is the case, but there seems to be a huge influx in the volume of drafts happening on ESPN at the moment. So therefore, their changes in ADP are wild in comparison to Yahoo. We're moving five, six spots. And I'm not disagreeing with what's happening at ESPN with these draft positions because some of them should be moving. But it's a big difference. Like Larry Markin has moved up 28 spots over the last week to number 86. That's about right, 86. Maybe a little bit higher. The delicate dancer, Alperen Sengun. It's a delicate dance in just 17 steps. Like he's moved up 27 spots to be number 62. It, we know that he was well, well down, but there seems to be a huge volume of people saying, ESPN, you're, you're really wrong on this. So let's um, draft at the right spot. Jalen Bronson. Now he was he's insanely ranked at number 24 on... Um, their points league ranking. So ADP is following that. He's up to 39. That's a 24 spot rise at 39. No way. That's it's too high. Sorry. Cousin Kevin Porter. Finally, we're getting Kevin Porter at a reasonable spot. Up 23 spots at number 74. I'm, I'm on board with it. 
Des Bain's up 19 spots to 56. And you can see that the 56 might be actually too low in some situations because he was ranked in the 70s. We had an ADP in the 70s last week, which was obviously insane. But people are starting to bring him in right. Brandon Clark moved up 17 spots to 107. And to that, I say, why? What changed to make Brandon Clark look better? Don't know about that one. Nor do I th- know about Spencer Dinwiddie coming into number 95. Up 17 spots. Dinwiddie apparently now is coming off the bench, which caps his minutes upside. He's already not a good category league player in general. 95 is a burning of a pick in round eight. And Halliburton, well, this is, again, what we know they were insane. And I spelt that wrong unbelievably. Tyrese Halliburton has moved up ADP 16 spots. He was, that means, last week at 30. If you're in a league and you got Tyrese Halliburton at 30, what on earth was going on? His ADP is up to 14. I don't think that's fine. 11 to 14 is about the right area for Tyrese. So he's moved up 16 spots into the right spot, meaning that in the past there was insanity going on there. So who dropped? What's the standard stuff? It's Jaron dropped 33 spots to 134. Love him at 134. Rob Williams dropped 32 spots to 111. Pretty good spot for him. Lonzo, 22 spots down to 136. But, okay, no, no, I'm not really interested in drafting Lonzo, to be honest. Let's talk about Kyle Lowry. Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. Why has he dropped down 19 spots? That is 118 for Kyle Lowry. Uh, If you draft Kyle Lowry there, even if he plays 40 games, who cares? That is an insane number. And and the fact that he's trending downwards, I can't wrap my head around that. That's crazy. He was 50th in category leagues per game last season. I know he missed time, but man, what? Um, Karis LeVert down 18 spots to 134. I, I don't mind it. Probably wouldn't, but I don't mind it. Brad Beal down 17 spots to 52. What? What? I know Brad Beal is um, apparently uh, a COVID legend because he's out again in health and safety protocols. And yeah, we, we at the start of last season, he was unvaccinated. I don't know whether he... I thought he got vaccinated because he was able to play in Toronto, but maybe not. But the fact that he's out in health and safety protocols again means that Either he is, it means he's unvaccinated or he's caught COVID and he's got symptoms. So we're, not, we're going to have fewer health and safety protocol issues issues this season for sure. But does this is this why Beal has dropped to 50? That, that's crazy. And the, the opinions on Beal are, are all over the place. I had someone say, hey, I'm going to, I want to take Beal at pick 36. And someone said, there's no way he falls past 28. Like, I don't think I've seen Beal go in the top 30 in any draft. And the direction of him moving down at 50, that's, that's, Absolutely stupidity. Why would he be going at 52? Why is Brogdon dropped 17 spots to 101? He should be going in the other direction. Draymond Green dropped 16 spots to 103. Actually, don't mind that. I think Green is... It should be in the later areas. 103 is probably too late for Draymond, but I think he should be sort of trending downwards. Um, and let's look at some fan tracks numbers. Now, Fantrax gets their ADPs out to like 700, 600. So there can be some wild changes for guys that aren't going to matter for nearly anybody. So I tried to make it into the guys that are at least 12-team eligible or 12-team viable. Guys that jumped up, Wiseman went up 11 spots to 133. DeAndre Hunter up 7 to 156. He's played well in the two games. At least the last round fly. I don't love him, but at least last round. RJ Barrett, six spots up to 92. Yeah, don't know about that one. Jaden Ivey up six to 132. Yeah, people are starting to love the rookies. Julius Randle up 6 to 58. Yeah, that's fine. Ubre up 6 to 132. Yes. Cole Anthony up 5 to 127. I think he should be higher than that with the injuries in Orlando now. And then the man on the street, Jordan Clarkson. J O R D A N C L A R K S O N. Um, he's up 5 spots to 135. I think he's going undrafted in some leagues. I think he should be drafted. And then the guys that have dropped on fan tracks, Mark Williams has fallen down. Oh, hi Mark. 33 spots to 191. I Look, he has to... It'd have to be a real stash. And he's third string at the moment for the centers there in Charlotte. Down at 191. Yeah, it's got to be last round, but that's a big drop. Gary Payton, I don't know why he was in the 150s anyway. He's dropped to 163. I wouldn't consider him. Rashawn Holmes down nine spots. Yep, nothing to suggest he should be moving up. Uh, Max Struess down eight to 162. Looks like he's going to lose a starting spot and then be pushed into a mix with Oladipo and Vincent off the bench. He shouldn't be 12-team guy. Malik Beasley, interesting to see him drop. 
down to 165, considering he was starting over Sexton. Um, I think that's still about the right area for him, though. Mason Plumley down 6 to 164. Yeah, look, I, I honestly just don't want to talk about Mason Plumley at all. Pat Beverly down 6 to 139. Yeah, I get that. I was interested in Beverly, and then Schroeder came in. Not that Schroeder's even played in preseason. But the fact that there's Schroeder, there's Beverly, there's none, there's so many guys there that I don't know how they're going to deploy it. And then Jalen Duran. Jalen Duran dropped. Five spots to 161. I thought it would go the other way. I thought he would push higher because he had some nice showings. But of course, there is still Stewart and Bagley who are ahead of him. He, like Mark Williams, he's a better player than Mark Williams in my opinion, um, is just a last round stash guy. But I think you're probably going to find other guys who are favorable there. And that will do it for Market Watch Monday. Follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey. If you're on YouTube, you thumb it up and you leave those comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.